have you on the show. I'm excited to get to meet you and know more about Fighting Jax. I've had your original Tooth and Nail release for a long time now, and I'm excited to see you guys back with a full length. Yeah, well, thanks, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, and uh, it's it's been a long journey since that uh, since that album, but we're we're really excited about this new music that's been coming out. Absolutely. Fantastic. So now uh, let's talk about the, the kind of the, the interim time, because uh, the, ne- the album that most people probably know you for, The uh, Dying Art of Life, came out in October of 2003, which is almost 10 years ago, or f- almost 15 <laughs> years ago, I guess. It's over yeah, 10 years. Yeah, almost 15. Yeah, uh, which is crazy, because there are probably people listening to this that weren't alive when that album came out, which is just really sad to think about on my part, and I can't imagine what it must be like for you. So... It's just kind of crazy, but uh, it is kind of crazy. We're we're gonna start getting looped into the uh, classic rock. Era. There <laughs> yeah, there's a few things worse than turning on the quote unquote classic rock station and hearing like Alice in Chains or Nirvana, and you're like, no, that yeah. is not classic rock. That is from high school. No, That's know. not <laughs> classic rock. <laughs> We'll have none of that. Oh, dear. So what's been happening in that uh, near nearly 15 years since that album came out on Tooth & Nail? Well, man, so that 15 years, um, we it, you know, some things kind of happened to us. So like, like in the beginning of that period, um, things, were, you know, things for us going on Tooth & Nail, like I, it just didn't seem like it was going to be, you know, a good match. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so, which, which is, you know, it's all fair. Right. It's, uh, it doesn't all, you know, it doesn't always work out between, between labels and, and, and bands, you know, bands want to go a different direction or it just didn't seem like it was what it was going to be. So, so, you know, we parted ways of tooth and nail and that took a little bit of wind out of our sails, but, um, we also <laughs> got back from tour and, all of our gear got stolen. Oh no. And that was a big blow. That was a big blow to us. And it, it like that really took the wind out of our sails. So, um, we had, you know, a lot of these songs that are on this album, we had written back then. Oh wow. They're actually that old. Um, and so, you know, we, we had plans of, of doing this album a lot earlier than, than now, you know, having it come out now. But uh, just you know, whether whether it be God or, or 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 other forces unknown, it just wasn't the time. So, um, so yeah, gear got stolen. That took a lot of wind out of our sails. Our the our drummer David Provenzano at the time uh, also left the band. You know, I don't know six months six months later, about uh, to to join forces with a band called Sherwood, and okay. uh, they yeah they did a you know. They did great things and and did a lot of touring and and so forth. So, which was good for him. You know, he he was a little bit younger than us, and uh, he wanted to be on the road, and right. we just couldn't be we couldn't be on the road at that time. So, okay, uh, it all worked out good. But we wanted to finish. We wanted to record the album. We wanted to do all that. So David did you know join forces with us to record the album because his drum parts. At least in my in my experience of, of writing and playing, we've never had a drummer like him, and uh, I don't think we could find anyone that could do quite what he did. So it was great to have him because the chemistry was there, and we were able to capture that and you know put it out 15 years later. Um, so uh, that was a good thing. Um, but you know the other things that happened after that was just life. Um, you know, all, actually all of us got married. I'm married. My brother got married. Mike got married. Uh, David got married. Yeah, I've got two kids. Um, so it's just, you know, life just needed to happen. And, and if, if, if that hiatus didn't happen, there would be a lot of great things in my life that I would not have. Right. So right. It's been a, it, it's been a good thing overall. And it's given us time to just just let the music kind of develop. Uh, we tracked it all almost 15 years ago. Um, that's why the, that's why the album is named decade. Right. It, it was about 10 years, about 10 years, um, maybe a little more that we tracked the record, uh, but didn't finish mixing. Didn't, didn't actually mix it and finish it until now. Wow. Wow. So of course, I guess the logical follow-up to, to that is then, 
Uh, what is the plan from here? I mean, you've been able to get these songs out that have been kind of in the works for about a decade. So what does that mean from here for Fighting Jacks? Well, <laughs> I don't, you know, uh, I mean, for for our fans that are out there, I mean, I'm not sure if they want to hear this. We don't really have a plan. Right. Um, the the end game, at least at least for us, was just to get this album out. Right. Because we we you know we do have loyal fans that have they've known about this music. They've heard some of the songs from way back in the day when we we play them live, and we just tell them you know this is going to be coming out, and, you know, the next album. Right. And you know people, we still got you know questions. People asking us, hey, when are you going to put this next album out? When's it coming out? And um, it was, it's really a due diligence to them and to us to put this album out, uh, for them, but also for, for us personally, because <laughs> I think this is the best stuff we've ever done. Yeah. Um, I, and I would concur with that. I mean, I remember enjoying the tooth and nail record and I was like, okay, well, this is good. I'd be curious to see where it goes from here. And then of course, nothing really did come from yeah. that. Um, but then I and I saw that this was coming out, and I listened to the to the two songs that you guys had put out as kind of a teaser, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is really good. I, I want to hear more." So, um, you know, I think I think you're right. I think this is the the best stuff that you guys have have probably ever put out. It's it's weird for it to be the circumstances that it is, but I'm glad it's out now. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it's out now, and who knows? I mean, I don't know where it goes from here. We we there was no game plan as far as resurrecting the career. Right. Uh, by any means, I mean the industry's changed a lot nowadays since you know back when we we did have a career. Right. I don't know how much touring is going to be, you know, in the future. Cause I got I got two two young kids, three year old and a four year old, and they need a lot of attention. Right. <laughs> so I mean, you know, the thought of the thought of being away from them for an extended period of time doesn't it doesn't necessarily sit well with me. But uh, not to say that we can't, you know, pop up, you know, here and there and do some shows, you know, if, if momentum builds, if there's a, if there's a demand for it, I mean, I don't see why we couldn't need it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, has there been anything that's come out of, out of putting out new music that you didn't expect thus far? I know that it's, it's, it, I mean, it's just kind of just now out, but has there been anything that's come from this that you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. You know, a lot of the we, we've gotten a lot of great feedback. Yeah, we've got a lot of great feedback, and you know, uh, I expected some of our loyal fans to be excited, and and you know, for them to be happy and express their feelings about it. But there has been there, there's been a lot of feedback from just you know people I don't know, right? You know, that are just they're like, wow, like I love this album. You know, I, I didn't expect to hear that I love this album. You know, I have to I have to keep my expectations low. Right. Even though I think this is the best stuff I've ever made. You know, everyone's a critic. And yeah. I got to keep my expectations low so I don't. Uh, so for one, my ego doesn't blow up. And two, you know, I don't set myself up for failure. So, you know, I expected to hear some some positive reviews like, hey, this is a good album, solid album. Yeah. But uh, it's it's been it's been overwhelmingly positive and, and it's it's nice I'm, I'm just glad that people are enjoying it that's all i want is just people to enjoy it yeah for sure now you guys uh were talking about actually playing some shows you guys have at least one show already lined up for the near future don't yeah you? we do we've got one lined up locally uh you know within our within our kind of home days and that's gonna that's going to be the album release show okay just to commemorate you know the, the album release and we're going to have some some like printed you know digital download cards that uh, that people can purchase and whatnot um and what we're hoping is to create enough revenue so we can press some vinyl right that's really been on our sites is as far as something to do and uh I mean, it would be a very small small amount uh you know limited release but Man, you know, <laughs> just to just to just to have a piece of vinyl that has your music on it, like it would just that would be pretty darn cool in my book. Right, right. Well, I mean, you know, just much the same. I mean, how how cool was it the first time you held the dying art of life in your hand on CD back in the day? Oh, well, I mean, the CD part was cool. The first time seeing it in Tower Records was even better. Right. <laughs> like, holy cow! Dude. <laughs> like we had an end cap. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was like 
Like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I mean, that's kind of one of those things that you always kind of imagine one day, but then, you know. And, and of course, it's even weirder still because it's like there's really hardly anything to compare that to now. It's like, what are you, are you like the top band yeah. on iTunes now? Yeah, I, mean, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a strange thing to think about how much has changed. But uh, yeah. Yeah, craziness. What do you think has been the biggest thing for you personally that that has changed in between the time that you wrote the songs for this record and the time that you're now releasing them? Uh, I mean, a lot of character growth. Yeah. A lot, a lot of character growth. I mean, we, you know, we really learned from, you know, from falling pretty hard from where we were. We, we learned a lot. And it's, you know, we learned that it's incredibly easy to, to be caught up in the scene. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly incredibly easy to compare yourself to what others are doing and the success that others are having. And it's super easy to do. Is it right to do it? I'm not going to say if it's right or wrong. Is it healthy to do it? I wouldn't say so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what we learned was it's, you know, it's not fair. You know, we, we can work really hard and, and not get much out of it. And other bands may not work so hard and get, get a lot. Yeah. But... It, you know that's life that's life and i think i think that overall life is pretty fair and, and it's allowed me to it's allowed me to just relax and enjoy what we have enjoy the music that we have written enjoy that it's coming out and just have no expectations you know and just be proud of that right right well here's a random question for you uh, i mean of course when uh the dying art of life came out on tooth and nail it was 2003 you guys were on a label you were on an in-cap and tower records. You guys were, I'm sure, getting new fans from touring and people who were just randomly picking up the record because the album art was really cool. Um, does it feel any different to be getting new fans or having old fans return now that it's not a big push? I mean, it's not. There's not, you know, thousands of dollars pushing it out on in ad campaigns. You're not in a, you know, a magazine, uh, you know, page saying, "Hey, go buy the record." Does it feel any different now than it did when it was a kind of, a, I guess, a bigger machine behind it? It, uh, yeah, I'd say the feeling's different. It's, it's a feeling of flattery. Now, yeah. you know, before, before being young and ambitious, it was a feeling of conquest. Right. And, uh, now it's, now it's flattering. You know, it, I, I don't deserve, you know, we don't deserve five fans. I, I, it's just flattering that people still care about hearing anything that we put out. And that, that brings me joy. Yeah, I can imagine that it would. That that's that's a huge difference, and it's also kind of easy to see it. I would think, at least, because I've never been in a band, much less had anything put out on a record label. But it seems like it would be pretty easy in the case when you're on a label and you do have a big push to be like, well, of course people like it. Like there is a lot of money paid to make sure that people at least see it's there, um, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like an expectation of of having that kind of power behind a release, but. When it's not there, then it, it's just it seems like that would be even more of like you said a little flattering. It is. It's it's very flattering, and not to deter any band from ever pursuing signing with a record with a record label, right, and, right. and going for it. But I mean, it's uh, when you don't have the pressure to produce behind it, it's a lot more fun. Oh yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's it's a lot more fun for sure, for sure. Cool. Well, um. Oh, I do have one kind of somewhat serious question I want to ask you, and, and I sure. thought about it until I was uh, kind of glancing through your Facebook before I gave you a call. But, um, of course, recently uh, Rock and Roll lost Chester from Linkin Park, and, and that was right. kind of a big thing that hung heavy over a lot of people. Um, did did this? Was this something that was something that kind of hit you in any particular way? Uh, I, I didn't see it coming right. by, by any means. It was quite, a, it was, it was quite shocking and, and, a you know, a bit disturbing, uh, to see, you know, this happen to him, especially, you know, so close to Chris Cornell. Right. And, uh, and it gave me, you know, it gave me the fear of like, you know, well, I hope this doesn't become a trend, <laughs> right <laughs> you know? Um, but it's, it's incredibly, it's incredibly heartbreaking. And, you know, the, he seemed like he seemed like such a positive guy. Yeah. You know, I never met him, but you know, we've we've had friends. We have, you know, circles that are close to them and and you know, from from everything that I knew, he seemed like a positive guy. You know, he had six kids and a wife and you know, the the interviews and the things I saw of him, he he just seemed to have a life about him that was a go get him. And mm-hmm. it's it's sad to see that go, for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. I mean, it's weird because I I agree that he felt like there was something more to him than maybe just your average rock star. It always felt like there was some sort of cause or a purpose behind stuff that they yeah. were doing and, you know, getting partnering with people for tours that was benefiting more than just themselves or, or you know, absolutely. An, an industry. Um, and it was kind of weird to see somebody who felt like they had a purpose. Um, and maybe that wasn't in God. Maybe he hadn't gotten there yet, but it seemed like he yeah. always had some sort of more of a purpose than let's just make music so we can get some money and, and whatever else. But yeah, yeah. And it, it, it hit me kind of hard too, but I was just curious if you had any thoughts on that. I think that's very well said. Cool. Well, I want to end on a lighter note. Um, okay. so it's been, a, it's been a decade since you guys wrote these songs. The album is out now. You guys are going to play a show and maybe some more. We'll see how things go. But what would you say? to the listening audience is the most unrock and roll thing about you. <laughs> Man, that's a good one. The most unrock and roll thing about you know what, dude, if you're gonna, you know, you go go hard or go home on this one. <laughs> uh, most unrock and roll thing about me, I love to watch The Bachelorette and The Bachelor show with my wife. Oh that that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty bad. bad but, I, but but way to go for going for it, man. That's all that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that is craziness. That is crazy. So uh, now, um, ha- has that put any? Has that put any pressure? Seeing all, I mean, I mean, because I know how these things go. I mean, all, there's there's a lot there's a lot to live up to with kind of the expectations that might be set by the show. Is that is that oh. been your case? <laughs> no, dude, no, no. I mean, it's unrealistic. Like, oh well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's unrealistic. I mean, I mean, if I ever come across a helicopter, for sure, like I'll, I'll take advantage of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, cool deal, man. Cool deal. Well, of course, just to, just to recap, if people haven't already heard it, uh, you need to go check out "Decade" by the Fighting Jacks. It's on Bandcamp, and of course, pretty, I guess wherever you buy digital music at this point. Um, and of course people can get a, two of the songs, uh, off of uh, Bandcamp for a name your own price, as well as pretty much your whole back catalog, except for, um, the tooth and nail release as well. So, right, um, right. definitely worth checking out and dude, I'm glad to see you guys, um, putting out some new stuff and whether it means touring or not, I'm glad that you guys got to get the monkey off your back and get the, get it out onto the internet so people can enjoy it and, and love on it. And, uh, I hope that uh, things go well from here, man. Awesome. Paul, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely.